shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light. He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, he entered the mountain. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save.
There's a grace when the heart is undefined Another way when the walls are closing in When I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be alone. There was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. Should I ever need reminding? Of how I've been set free There is a cross that bears the burden Will another die for me? There is another in the fire There is another in the fire Oh my death that the death in me
There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. Nothing can compare your island home. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen. The sweetest of love When my heart becomes free And my shame is undone Your presence, Lord Holy Spirit, you are welcome Come Fill the atmosphere Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for To be overcome by your presence, Praise the Lord, everybody. God bless you all this evening. We honor the God of our salvation. We recognize it is in him. We live, we move, and we have our being. How many of you are grateful tonight for God being such a wonderful God? He's blessed us magnanimously and supernaturally on the two 
nights that we have gathered together. <coughs> We're expecting the Lord to do mighty things uh, with us and through us tonight. Can you just give God a mighty praise? Uh, over Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Lord, Hallelujah. He has covered us under his blood. He has blessed us. He has been so good to us. He's protected us and guided us in spite of whatever you may have confronted or faced on today. What a mighty God we serve. And he is truly up to something special and unique in this season. And we are all going to see the mighty demonstration and the exploits of God in this season greater than we have in previous season. And I just want you to know tonight to fasten your seatbelts because God is ready to take us higher than we have been previously and before. If you don't mind, can you just testify out of your mouth? Repeat after me. God is ready. God is ready. And take me higher. Take me higher. Come on. God is ready. God is ready to take oh. us higher. Take us higher. Amen. Amen. Because God Amen. is going to do it with us and through us collectively and collaboratively because we do know that the body of Christ is not based or predicated upon one person. It is we and not I. And so I'm grateful tonight for what the Lord is going to do in the lives of the people of God. And no believer will be left behind because we serve an amazing and inclusive God that has the best things on his thoughts pertaining to you. Before we go any further tonight, uh, the man of God brings forth the word and ministers to us through power, uh, impartation, and prophecy. I'm going to ask our assistant, pastor-elect, Elder Bernie, to just bless us with a song of praise and thanksgiving, and then we will receive um, our friend, our brother, uh, Prophet Ronnie Adley, uh, Robert Adley, all the way from Palm Bay, Florida, who has blessed us in previous times. I don't know about you, but I feel something miraculous getting ready to happen tonight. And we Hallelujah. don't want to be quiet. We don't want to keep our mouth closed. Amen. I say it all the time that closed, yeah. closed mouths don't get fed. Amen. And you've got to open your mouth and you've got to say something and you've got to let God know I'm ready for whatever you have waiting for me. I'm not going to keep my mouth closed. I'm going to praise him. Remember this, whatever you're expecting is already expecting you. And this is not the time to be quiet, but this is the time to lift up your voice like a trumpet in Zion and let the heavens know I am ready praise for God, what the father has God. for me. Pastor Bernie, it's in your capable hands. Yeah. Allow the Lord to use you magnanimously yeah. and supernaturally as we go forth in the things of God. Yes, sir. Can you hear me okay? Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah, everybody. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory Glory to your name. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, thank you. Oh, Here I am to worship. Yes. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You are together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonder. For to me, I never know how much it costs to see my sins upon the cross. I never know how much it costs. To see my sins upon that cross, I'll never know how much it calls to see my sins upon that cross. Praise God. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. 
here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. I've never known how much it calls to see my sins upon that cross. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. You're my God. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. Here I am, Lord. And you're my God, yes. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. 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 Hallelujah. What a word. What a word. We've already said. We're turning it over now to the capable hands of Pastor Prophet Adelie of Power of God Ministries in Palm Bay. And of God, we are so elated and grateful that you thought not robbery to join us. And we have higher deference and reverence for you and your brother for the, how the Lord uses you. And we are just like empty pitchers before full fountains waiting for the impartation. Be blessed, man of God. Amen. Hallelujah. More grace to everybody. More grace, Amen. grace to you all. Listen, I want us to give God glory and praise for the man of God, Pastor Darren. Uh, such a jewel to the body of Christ. Um, can we just, I don't know, we can give hearts or everybody say yay or hey or whatever the case may be, but can we just give God praise for the man of God um, who has orchestrated uh, this this um, this area, this, this uh, means of us coming together to fellowship one with another. So if we could, let's just give God praise for him. In Jesus' Praise name, the Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm quite, Hallelujah. I'm quite sure. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm Amen. I'm quite sure. Yeah. I'm quite sure you guys have been Hallelujah. fed and 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 Thank turned you. up in the Holy Ghost uh, these Thank these you. last few days, and um, yeah. <clears throat> I just want to be obedient to what the Lord has mm -hmm. given me. Now, I will say this, uh, 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 just to put a side note in this, um, I believe that we are in a season now um, that God is strengthening the voice of the believer. Yes. I believe that we are walking in a season now that God is strengthening the voice of our leaders, strengthening the voice of the apostle, strengthening the voice of the prophet. God is strengthening the voices of the people. But I will say this, this is an hour now where God is trying to teach us and get us back to the place of consecration so that we can fortify the spirit man that, that dwells in our mortal body so that we can fortify the house of God, that we can fortify the things of God. Because what's getting ready to come upon America, what's getting ready to mm -hmm. happen, uh, mm -hmm. Right before, I said, Lord, I laid down this during this time of pandemic. My kids has been in school. And so we've been doing online school for four weeks. And so I don't know if anyone, if any one of you guys have kids or anything that nature. But yes. this school thing is very, very different and it's very challenging. Yes, and so sir. I said, Lord, well, I'm, I'm going to make sure that I make time that I can lay before him and just be quiet in his presence. And so I decided to do it today at five o'clock. The minute I laid down, hear me in the Holy Ghost, God took me into an open vision. 
And I want you to hear me by the Spirit because what's getting ready to happen now in this country, in this world, is God mm -hmm. is God is getting his church back to what they're supposed to look like, what they're supposed yeah. to sound like, how they're supposed to carry themselves. And God is Praise allowing God. things to happen to get the attention, mm -hmm. not of the world first, but of the church. Man, I and so Amen. as I was in this open vision, the Lord showed me, he showed me, he said, son, tell my people for the next 21 days, by any means necessary, consecrate yourself. He said, fast. He said, because I have to fortify the body of Christ. Now, some of you may say, well, man, it's hard to fast right now. You know what the, you know what the Spirit of God told me? He said, I don't care what type of fast they do. Just make a sacrifice. And the Lord began to talk mm -hmm. to me. He said, son, my people have left what was sacred. I said, talk to me, Spirit. He said, he said, even now, he said, we don't take Bibles to church no more. We take iPads. Yeah. And the Lord asked me a question. He said, how is it that you can read such a holy word on an iPad that you do everything else on? You take care of your business. You look at YouTube. You, you look at Facebook. You pay your bills, everything on this iPad. Wow. But you want to use this as something sacred and you don't pick up your Bible. Wow. Now, some of you Amen. may say, well, well, Amen. we're living in a different dispensation. Can I tell you? The Bible says that Hallelujah. God is the same today, yesterday, and forevermore. As a matter of fact, he told Jeremiah, Amen. he said, he, he, he told Jeremiah, he said, Jeremiah, tell my people that when you find the old way, he says, walk ye therein. The Bible Hallelujah. says also over there, I want to say, I want to say Corinthians or Galatians, not, no, not Galatians, but Corinthians or either Thessalonians, it says that the old ways of God. Some of the things that you were taught were not scriptorial, but what it was, it left you in a place of honoring the things of God. And he said, you have left this place. He says, but now I'm causing. Hallelujah. Says, I'm causing Glory. a riffle in the realms of the spirit to get Glory. the attention Glory. Glory. of everybody. Hallelujah. I want you to hear me. Because right along in yeah. here, what's yeah. getting ready to happen, there is a separation yeah. that's taking place. The Bible says, let the wheat and tail grow together, and he'll do the separation. What's yeah. going to cause the separation? Mm. The appetite of mm. your flesh. If you cannot mm. discipline your flesh, if you cannot discipline your emotions, if you cannot discipline your spirit, man, you're wow. getting ready to miss God. Wow. That's deep. Hallelujah. You're getting ready to miss God. Can I tell yeah. you, all of us are going, all of us are dealing with things. All of us are going through yeah. things. This is something yeah. new. Can I tell you, the world has never seen a pandemic in our century. The world has never mm -hmm. seen a pandemic of this kind. Of mm -hmm. this kind. Yes, sir. We have mm -hmm. a pandemic that's going on. We have, wow. we have a, a unsettled rest. We have racism. Yeah. We right. have all yeah. these things going on. We have a lot of things yes. going on Hallelujah. and all these things that are happening right now. It is to get the attention of the believer. Can yes. I tell you the mm -hmm. Bible says that Satan comes to steal, kill, and to destroy. Up until yes. this point, who's ever under the sound of my voice, everything that you have went through, if you have not died yet, it was not meant to kill you. It was only Amen. meant to make you stronger. Can That's I tell good. you, even as Job, the Bible says that God considered Job. Yes. Before he considered Job, he said Job was an upright man. God bragged on Job. Yes, he, he bragged mm -hmm. on him. Amen. But then he turned around and said, well, Satan, have you considered? And can I tell you, the consideration of God will always test your, your righteousness and your holiness to yeah. God. Because mm, some of us, we get That's lifted good. up in pride. Uh, we yeah. get lifted up in our holiness. We get lifted up in our righteousness. Some of us are more concerned about covering the image of ourselves than protecting the image of God. Mm. And so now God is saying, I have to get the attention. Yes, 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 yes. I understand that that President Donald Trump inside the office, I understand that he's a hard pill to swallow. But can I tell mm -hmm. you, God only gave mm -hmm. a nation a king to, uh, that, that was, that was uh, concerning or towards their heart. Mm -hmm. God gave them a king towards their heart, whatever their heart was. But can I tell you, the Bible says that the, the king, the heart of the king is in the hand of God, and he turns it so whichever way. Mm -hmm. And so when God took me in this vision, and I'm going to read a few scriptures, and we're going to pray tonight. 
when God took me in this vision, yes, it was so vivid. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden I began to feel a heat that begins that that begin to come upon my body. And while I'm in this vision, I see the Lord pointing out things that we have left our ground for yes. the sake of comfortability, for the yes. sake of paying attention to what other people are doing. We've yes. been so far gone, so far fetched that the enemy has come right up in our house yes. and we've become friends with the devil. My Lord. The Lord told me something. He I said, you will never be able to cast out the devil mm. and still want to be mm. friends with him. He said, mm. it's not until you no, get angry that. and mad with the devil that the devil have to flee. Can I tell mm. you, you cannot resist the devil when he still has a hold on your enticement. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so now, as, as, as I was in this vision, the Lord began to show me, he said, son, you have to tell my people the next 21 days is crucial. I want you to hear me in the Holy Spirit. The next 21 days is very crucial. I don't care if you have to fast from morning time to 2 o'clock, or if you got to fast from morning time to 6 p.m., or if you got to do a whole day fast. Whatever it is, you got to show God that you're willing to make a sacrifice. Right. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you this? All right. If mm -hmm. you don't make a sacrifice in this season, Hallelujah. you are going to miss God. I hear you, you, you are Glory going to, Lord. if you don't make a sacrifice, and, and I want you to hear me, hear me in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, sir. All of us, all of us are going Hallelujah. to miss. But can I tell you, even when the three Hebrew boys was thrown in the fire, they were willing to sacrifice themselves yeah. to prove to another God that you are not yeah. greater than my God. Yeah. Hmm. There has to be a sacrifice in this season. Can I tell you, a lot of times they tell you what worked for grandmama ain't going to work for you. Baby, can I tell you this? If it got them results, then it'll get you results. Yes. Mm -hmm. I thank God for the eloquency of speaking. I thank God for those, the great orators. Yeah. But Paul said, when I came to you, I didn't come to you with enticing words on man's wisdom. Yes, sir. He said, I came to you preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified. Yes, sir. He said, my faith in preaching was not in the wisdom of man, but it was in the power of God. Yes, sir. So, mm -hmm. In the mm -hmm. power of God. And so as I'm in this vision, the Lord began to share some things with me, and there's some things that I cannot share because there, there were some things that I believe that God <clears throat> wanted to strengthen my faith in. Right. But at the end of the vision, the Lord said, tell my people, the next 21 days, All right. as they take time to consecrate and fast, there was an old saying that we don't hear no more. Mm -hmm. They would say that we, we had a visitation from the Lord. Mm -hmm. God is looking to give a visitation. Mm -hmm. Can I tell you why? The Bible mm -hmm. says that in the last days, he will pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Mm -hmm. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. Mm -hmm. What are you saying, preacher? Without a prophet, we don't prosper. Hallelujah. Without a prophet, we don't prosper. Without a prophet, we don't prosper. That's why God is calling us on to sanctify ourselves. Because it's not that the prophet is not prophesying. It's not that the prophet is not speaking, thus says the Lord. Because we can't, we can't say all prophets are not living right. We can't say all prophets are not, are, is out for your money. No, that's not the case. Right. God knew the people wouldn't hear Moses. So he said, mm -hmm. Moses, tell my people to sanctify themselves. Come up to the mountain. Tell them don't touch nothing. Tell them don't touch nothing. And the minute they heard the voice of God, they begged Moses, please don't take us back up this place. Please don't. And so I am admonishing you 
I am encouraging you the next 21 days, consecrate yourself. Go on a fast. Some of you need to fast anyway because the pandemic has revealed what your appetite was. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amen. Some of you need to fast. And also, I'm going to say this, and I'm, and I'm going to read these scriptures. For all of you that's connected to the, to, the, to the Life Shift Church, it's necessary that you fortify the walls of that ministry. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, sir. Fortify the walls of that ministry. And some of you may ask, well, why do you keep saying fortify? Do you know that when the children of Israel was, was with Joshua, and God had told them that we're getting ready to give you that land. My God. When they walked around the walls of Jericho, those were fortified walls. Those walls were so wide that they was able to build a house on those walls. They were so long that the only way those walls came down was from a supernatural God. No devil in hell can penetrate what is fortified. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. No devil in hell can penetrate what is fortified. Thank you, sir. Amen. So I want to read this. And I'm in Romans chapter 8. And I'm quite sure your pastor has, has done a great job in teaching this. But there is something that I want to pull out. And bless your spirit. Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our mm. infirmities. Likewise, the spirit also helpeth our infirmities. Yes, yes. For we know not what we should pray for as yes. we ought. Yes. But the Spirit mm. itself mm. maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the spirit. Yes. Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to the will of God. I just need a few moments of your time. Take your time. And we're going to get out of here. Hallelujah. We're going to get out of here. Now the Lord hadn't given me a, 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 a topic all right. But while I'm sitting here, the Lord just gave me something. And I want you to uh, write this down. I want you to write down, no longer will I be bound by my shortcomings. My God. No like, longer will I be bound by my shortcomings. No longer will I be bound by my shortcomings. Now, we are talking about consecration and prayer, right, Pastor? Yes, sir, we are. Okay, so I can be free to speak um, truth and, you know, be very transparent. Yes, sir. Absolutely. To understand what the Apostle Paul was talking about in the scripture suggests that you have to understand the life and journey that he has taken. Now, I uh, understand this, that I'm not going to go too deep into this because I want to stay on the surface of what it is that God has given us to discuss tonight. But I'm going to say this. The Bible says, through much affliction shall we enter into the kingdom of God. Mm. Afflictions are an indication that you are still alive. 
-hmm. Afflictions are indication that there is a struggle that you have yet to give into. Mm -hmm. Afflictions is an indication that you have said yes to God and no to the devil. My God. Afflictions is a representation that you have said, God, by any means necessary, I'm going to hold to the horns of this altar. Afflictions is a representation, as the man of God says, present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable uh. unto God, which is your reasonable service. Afflictions oh is a representation that you're saying, God, because you are God in my life, I don't understand the goings that I have. But you said, according to Proverbs, that you will lead and direct my path. Can I tell you? The whole purpose that God had to present the man of God with a light or lamp on his, on his tassels connected to his clothes was because walking at nighttime, there are what we call snakes that would be around on the ground. And in order for you not to walk in something dead or, or in order for you to walk, not to walk in something that, that, that will harm you, there has to be a certain level of light that is presented so that you can see. So afflictions doesn't always mean the bad things. Afflictions actually means the good things. Now you may ask, okay, so what are, what are, you, what are you referring to? You must understand this, that all of us serving God, we have to understand the Bible says that we were born into sin, shaping into, shaping into iniquity, which means that at the end of the day, this flesh that we're living in is going to always desire the things of this flesh. Your flesh is not going to desire to pray. Your right. flesh is not going to desire to live righteous. Your flesh is not going to desire to live holy. Your flesh is not going to desire to keep the laws of the Lord. But what has to happen is, the Bible says, as Paul says, you have to mortify these very deeds of your flesh. Now, you may ask, well, how do I do this? In order to mortify these deeds, you got to build your prayer altar. The Lord told me something, and I'm going to drop this nugget on you right now. He said, son, if you walk into the temple and you don't hear my voice, you will always hear my voice on the altar. Wow, that's good. Mm -hmm. The altar is a mm -hmm. place where alterations take place. And good. if you notice in wow. today's church, we will rather stand in our seat and say, everybody close your eyes and not make a confession that God, I need you. And the enemy is manipulating us and we are confessing it, but leaving right out of the church and losing our possession because now no one is there to hold us accountable to the confession that we made. Wow. So when we go to the altar, not only are we making a confession, but God is making a covenant with you that he is going to be with you. He said, Lord, I'll be with you always, even until the ends of the earth. And so now what's happening? We are not pushing ourselves to the altar no more. We are praying. We are, we, we are sitting. I mean, we, we pray laying down. We pray sitting in our cars, all that is fine and tandem. But sometimes you got to build a sacred area. Yes, sir. You got to build a, you know, my God, I feel the presence of God. You have to build a sacred area where you can say this area belongs to God and nothing else. No one touch this place. No one enter this place. This has to be your altar because your altar place will represent the castrating of the flesh that's hindering you from progressing in God. Can I tell you, I don't care how many prophecies you receive. I don't care how many, I don't care what it takes. If you don't apply yourself and tie yourself to the altar of God, can I tell you, your life is going to be in the spirit of repeat. And in the demonology world, they call that the spirit of tantralon, which means that it keeps you in a vicious cycle, a vicious cycle around the same time, whether it's every week, whether it's every month, whether it's every year, 
year, whether it's every every 10 years, the enemy will always keep your life in a vicious cycle. The spirit of tantrum and what has to happen in order for that thing to break. The Bible says that some things come out but by fasting and praying. No, 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 no. We're already praying. But what do we have to do in order to get the attention of God? We got to get back to the altar. So this is why afflictions are upon us. This is why we are experiencing infirmities. But if you notice what he said in verse 26, he says, likewise, also the spirit helpeth your infirmities, which means that the Holy Ghost, the spirit of God, he feels your drive. He knows you. My day. The Holy mm. Ghost feels your drive. The Holy Ghost knows what drives you. He knows what's sitting on you. But what the Holy Ghost is saying is, you have to give me something to work with. Yes, mm -hmm. you got to read your word. But if you don't pray with reading that word, guess what? You just have a loaded gun that's on safety mode. My God. Mm -hmm. My God. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so the Spirit of God that's walking and working with you his desire is to push you to the altar. Now, I'm not that old. I'm pretty, um, I want to say uh, I, I, I've lived a, a good life, but I'm not that old. But one thing I recognize is this, that whenever God wants to get your attention, hmm. there are no measures. Mm -hmm. that he would not do to get your attention. That's true. That's true. There are no measures. That's true. But if I be very honest with you guys today, one of the most important things of my life in relationship with Christ is when I built my altar. But the minute I lacked in building my altar, I started noticing Robert come up. I start noticing things that normally wouldn't bother me start bothering me. So true. And what has to happen is even though the spirit of God knows your infirmities, you still got to get to that altar. And there will become a place in life that you will deal with so much that when you get down to pray, you won't even know what to say because what you say won't even matter. My God. Because you will pray, but you will feel a disconnect from what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And what you're saying, you've been saying it for years. Mm -hmm. But when you start going through so much, what you're saying, you will feel so disconnected. All because you have stopped building your altar. Powerful and true. And so <clears throat> the believers are not left to their own resources or reassurance to cope with their problems. Even when you don't know the right words to pray, the Holy Spirit will pray with and for you. Yes. And then God will answer. Yes. Hmm. With God helping you to pray, you should never be afraid to come before him. You can ask the Holy Spirit to plead with you according to the will of God. Then Amen. when you bring your request to God, you will have to trust that he will always do what Amen. is best for you. Always. Amen. Yes, sir. Somebody type that. He'll always. He'll do always do what's best for you. He'll always Amen. do what's best Amen. for you. Yes. Amen. Teach I'm going to say Amen. this. When we start to fast and pray, mm -hmm. whatever you have not dealt, my God, whatever you have not dealt with before you started fasting and praying, yeah. once you start fasting and praying, that part will always heighten what you have been dealt with. And some of you always say, well, I try to fast and pray and I get hungry. Well, you should have dealt with it before you started. <laughs> How do I deal with it? Well, before you start fasting, eat one time a day. Don't eat so heavy. Train your body. Okay. 
You know, when people train for the Olympics, they train years right. to have one opportunity. To right. That's good. Gold. That's good. So train your body to fast. My God. Train yeah. your spirit mm -hmm. to hold down. You got to train your spirit. You know, my spiritual mother told me, she said, son, if you don't have no weight in the spirit, the enemy will blow you away. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. The church is too light right now. We don't have any weight. Wow. We're too light. Mm -hmm. We're too light. We don't have any weight. We're praying, but there's no weight. We're crying out to God, but there is no weight. We're not weighted in the spirit. Mm. If we were weighted yeah. in the spirit, the church won't be in a position that is, hey, Shandili Ukuya Bahaya. We're not mm. weighted in the spirit. We're too light. Mm. Enemy can come to us and scoop us right on up. We're not yeah. weighted in the spirit. You get your weight by being on the altar. You got to get your weight up in the spirit. And so the Bible says here, he says this. He says that he will make intercession for the saints yes, according mm. to the will of God. There will come a time when you lay on the altar and you don't know what to say. Mm -hmm. The spirit will have to speak to you. The spirit will have mm -hmm. to speak through you. And the spirit mm -hmm. will have to speak for you. Can I tell mm -hmm. you why? It's because the spirit knows the mind of God. Mm -hmm. And even when our minds have been so plagued with everything in this world, the spirit of God always knows the heart of God. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. yes. And so I want to say this. Hold on, where is it? The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, so that we can get some understanding. He says, for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the filling of our infirmities. Yes, sir. But in all points we're tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. Now, I, I want to make sure we get this understanding. We're talking about consecrating ourselves, fasting and praying. So we're not here to pull a text and preach three points. No, sir. No, sir. We're here to get your spirit in position yes, so that you can hear from God, so that you won't be thrown and tossed by every wind and every doctrine that you hear. Mm -hmm. Can I be very honest with you? The reason why some of us are not weighted in the spirit is because we're so focused on what God is saying that we don't know what God has said. Wow. That's good. That's good. Some of us would be further if we would submit to leadership at the church. Uh-oh. All this plays a part in consecrating. Because remember, when God called a fast, God called a consecration, God didn't tell the sheep to blow the trumpet. Yeah. He told the leaders, yeah. told Joel, he says, mm -hmm. blow ye the trumpet in what? In Zion, yes, which sir. is his body, right. his church. So we have a lot that we have to deal with. But in order for us to get ourselves in position to get before the Lord, mm -mm. We got to realize that it's the infirmity that has drove us to God. Yeah. It's, 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 it's the problems that have driven us to God. Yes, sir. Don't let the enemy manipulate you. I got one more thing I want to say, and then we're going to, we're going to pray. Where is it? Let me find it. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 33 and 3, he says, call unto me 
Yes. And I will answer thee. Yes, sir. And I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Pastor, you're going you're gonna to like this one. As I was reading this scripture, mm -hmm. I was asking the Lord, I said, well, God, there's a lot of things that have taken place in this world that a lot of us didn't see coming. Right. Some of us saw it coming, but some of us didn't see it coming. We just got to be honest. Right. Honest. And the Lord reminded me, he said, son, the reason why you didn't see it coming, because nobody called upon me. My God. Right here. He said, call unto me and I will answer thee. Mm -hmm. And I will show you. Yes. So if you ever wanted to know mm -hmm. what the altar does, mm -hmm. when you build your altar, yes, sir. and God has erected your altar, Come on. your altar mm -hmm. is established in the heavens yeah. and registered <clears throat> in hell. <clears throat> there is nothing that's good. that God will withhold from you. My God, that's good. That's good. The Bible says that he told Abraham, he said, Abraham, he said, listen, I call Abraham friend. There is no way that I can come upon this earth and do anything and not tell Abraham what I'm getting ready to do. Mm. My, 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 my. There is a place that you can walk in with God. Yes, sir. That God will not allow nothing in this earth, earth to happen that he would not consult you with. Yes, now, some of you may say, oh, this preacher, he too deep. I ain't going for that. Listen, Abraham was, Abraham was who he was according to Hebrews because of his gift of faith. Amen. Yes, sir. He, he walked with God. Yes, sir. There was nothing that God did not allow to happen on this earth without consulting Abraham. God said, Abraham, if you can just find one righteous, hmm. I'll spare the city. Thank you, Jesus. He couldn't find him, so he said, I'm going to give you this. My God. Go tell, go tell Lot and his family to get up out of there. Hmm. So I'm telling you today, your altar has to be erected so that heaven can recognize and register your voice. My God. Your voice has to be registered. Mm. It has to be registered. You have to get back between the porches and the altar. We got to get Zion has gotten too comfortable for God. We are too comfortable. I was laughing. I'm closing my Bible. I was laughing. I was talking to a preacher. And uh, he was telling me, he was telling his, um, the people that follow his ministry, that when y'all get the stimulus check, y'all better not spend it. Y'all need to save it. Right. And at one point I said, you know what, preacher, that sounds real good. We may need to echo the same thing. But the Lord halted me. My God. And he asked me, what does stimulus mean? What's the purpose of the stimulus check? And I had to go do my research. The stimulus was supposed to go back into the world to stimulate the economy. All right. Let's take it to the church. Bring ye all the tithes, these things into the storehouse. So there may be meat in my house. We as a people have been sitting on things out of ignorance hmm. because we're scared for what tomorrow has to hold. When the Bible tells us not to build our hope. I'm a, listen, when the Lord calls me home, I'm ready to go home because I recognize that I'm just a pilgrim in this land. Amen. So we got to get this ease out of the body of Christ. Wow. Ease. Mm -hmm. We have to get this ease out of the body of Christ. You got to get back to the altar. Get back to praying. Get back to fasting. Right. You know, my brother was talking. I said, hey, man, we got to go back to doing altar calls. We never stopped doing altar calls, but we didn't make an initiative to have people to come up to the altar. 
We got to get back to the act. I hear you, sir. We got to get back to that. I hear you. We got to get back. Let's pray. Father in heaven. Yes, Lord. Lord of the universe. Yes. God. Creator of all creation. Father, we just want to tell you thank you. Thank you, Jesus. God, as I'm here today with my brothers and my sister, Father, I pray right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. God, that you will forgive us yes, God. for every sin, everything that we've said, done, knowing and unknowingly. <laughs> God, that was not pleasing unto you. Yes, Lord. God, right now, I pray in the name of Jesus that everybody that's under the sound of my voice, God, that you will move by your power. God, I pray even now. God, as we are petitioning you, yes, Lord. God, we're petitioning on you, oh God, to hear the cry from earth. God, we understand, God, that we declare, God, that your will be done on earth yes, as it is in heaven. And I pray tonight, God, that you will rectify and erect, oh God, your spirit in these, your vessels, even now in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I thank you, God, because you said according to your word, God, that you will never leave us, nor will you ever forsake us. Oh. And Father, right now, according to Jeremiah, God, we're calling upon you, God, because we understand. Yes, oh, Lord. God, that there is nothing that we can do without you. Father, we need you more than our bodies need blood. God, we need you more than the earth need to rain, God. God, we need you more than the fish need no, 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 no. to see, more than the power need the air. God, as a matter of fact, God, we need you more than the breath in our bodies. God, we understand, God, that it is you that we live, move, and have our very being. But God, I pray tonight in the name of Jesus, that God, that you will move upon these, your people. Oh, God, whatever is hindering us, Whatever is holding us back, God, from getting to that place, God, where you desire us to be. Father, may you break it by fire and by force. God, I call on the host of heaven. I call on the armies of heaven, God, to stand in the four corners of this region. God, to stand in the four corners of this people home, God. God, that you may allow, God, your glory, God, to be the defense of these your people. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh tonight. Yes. Fall on our hearts, God. Hallelujah. Sanctify us, oh God. Constrain us, God. Constrain our spirit, God. Constrain mm. our bodies to get back in the boat, God. Mm. Constrain us now, God. Mm. And Father, we thank you, God. God, thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy, God. I pray even now, God, that as everyone that is represented here, Father, under my voice, God, don't move because I said move. But God, move, God, because you said, well, two or three, gather together in your name. Yes, Lord. You promised to be in the midst, oh God. I pray even now, Lord. God, you said you heard the cry of your children yeah. and you mm -hmm. sent a savior. Oh God, God, thank you for sending your son. Yes, we thank Lord. you for what Jesus had done, God. Mm -hmm. We thank you for the blood that was shed, oh God. God, without yeah. the shedding of the blood, God, there would be yeah. no remission of our sin. And Father, we thank yeah. you, oh God, for sending him. But now, God, I pray. God, that you allow yeah. the outpouring of the Holy Spirit uh, yes, Lord, to yeah. come like a mighty Russian wind. Uh, yeah. God, let your spirit come like a mighty Russian wind. Oh, God, let your spirit come like a mighty Russian wind, oh, God. Let your spirit come like a mighty Russian wind, God. To, to, to yeah. consume yeah. Yeah. whatever's not like you, God. To, to consume it now, God. Thrust us to the altar. Throw us back at the altar, God. God, whatever it takes, God. However you decide to do it, God. In the name of Jesus. And Father, we thank you. I just heard the Spirit of God say here. Everybody, if we can just pray in the Spirit for just one minute. Come on, let's pray in the Spirit, everybody. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I just want to encourage. I want to encourage everybody that's on this line tonight. The Bible says, according to Philippians, that he that hath begun a good work in you, he shall perform it unto the name of Jesus. I don't care what you go through. I don't care what you deal with. You cannot you cannot judge a man of God by his height mm -hmm. how high he can go you cannot judge a man and say that God is really with him by the excitement that we see but the way that you know God is with a man mm -hmm. is, like when G is like when David was in the cave 
cave of Adullam and he wanted to give up. When those men found out where David was and told David, said, David, if you die here in this cave, we're going to die too. The Bible says that David knew then that he had a responsibility. And I tell you, this is a season that you have to know that you know that you have God in your life. The man of God says, make your election sure. Yeah. You got to make your in this hour your election has to be sure. Yeah. Sure. That for God I live yeah. and for God I die. Yeah. Want to encourage your hearts. Consecrate yourself. Sanctify your fast. These mm. next 21 I'm telling you if you never hear my voice again. The Lord said tell his people the next 21 days, consecrate yourself in fast. Some of you need to fast, as I'm hearing the Lord say now, because there is sicknesses that's laying dormant in your body. Yes. And the only way to break them is you got to starve them out by fasting. God. All right. Fast. Mm -hmm. And I tell you, there is a certain glory that God would never release unto a believer mm. when he or she body is not in a certain position to carry the weight of the God's glory. That's true. Mm. There's a certain weight limit that you have to be at. There's a certain weight that you have to be in the realms of the spirit in order to carry a certain type of glory. No, God can use anybody. God used a donkey. We're not talking about God using somebody. We're talking about God allowing somebody to carry his glory. There's a difference when God used somebody and one carrying the glory of God. Everybody don't want to make the sacrifice to be a glory carrier. But for those of you who want to make the sacrifice to be a glory carrier. Sanctify yourselves. Consecrate yourself. Fast. These next 21 days. Make it mean something to God. As a matter of fact, we have the, we have the, 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 uh, the, 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 the feast of the trumpets coming up. The second, the second feast, the, 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 the second atonement that, that the children of Israel did was a representation of the second coming of Christ. This is the hour that you got to sacrifice yourself. Listen, I want to challenge everybody that's under the sound of my voice. Wow. I say everybody, I mean everybody. Yes, sir. I want to challenge you for the next 21 days to fast. As a matter of fact, if you go to uh, Pastor Darren's church, I want you to be accountable with your fast. Let the men of God know, Pastor, I'm going on this fast. Not only for myself, but that God put me in position to be Amen. one of the pillars to fortify the walls of this ministry. Amen. 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 Be accountable in this season. I challenge you all to do it. Amen. Listen, my time is about up. I want to also challenge you all to give a seed tonight. Now, <clears throat> some of you may ask, why do we sow? We sow because we need to put our DNA on what was released. That's why we sow. We sow to put our DNA on what was released. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir. Tonight, I want everybody to get a seed 
of $31. A seed of $31. I don't know if we can post the given information, Pastor, you can give it to them. But I want everybody to sow a seed of $31. Now, normally when you start asking for money, people come out of the spirit. But if I be very honest, <laughs> you only see in the Bible where people died when it came to giving. My God. You can, you can. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Cash app, which is the dollar sign. H-E-F-L-W-C. P S L. That's the dollar sign T H E F L W P S L. Or you can send it via Zell to the number 772 240 955. Again, you can send it via Zell to the number 772 240 nine two five five and the cash app number is or address rather again is the dollar sign t h e f l w c p s l and man of god i am going to sow my seed tonight because i believe god has spoken through you also bear in mind beloved that the previous speakers did not challenge you to sow a seed. This is not about money. This is not about a fundraiser. But I can attest to the fact that when we sow a seed, when we are instructed to do so, that God honors us and opens opportunities and availabilities that were previously closed. And so I'm a sower, and I believe that God honors us when we sow. And so we're grateful tonight for this opportunity to be able to sow this seed. I sold my seed of $31 as well. I'm doing this. I just, released, I just released my seed. I want to challenge everybody to sow a $31 seed. A $31 seed. A $31 seed tonight. So a $31 seed. No, you're not sowing for a prophecy. No, sir. You're not sowing. You're sowing because the Bible says in John 2 and 5, whatsoever he say do, that's what you do. If the disciples would have never obeyed what Jesus told them to do, Instead of reading of a miracle in John chapter 2, we'll be reading about a murder in John chapter 2. Yes, sir. Again, that number is 772-240-9255. 772-240-9255. Or the cash app, the dollar sign, T-H-E-F-L-W-C. P-S-L. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Man of God, you have confirmed, like the previous speakers, so many things. And it is affirmed tonight, the more, that as a leader and as the body, that we must spend more time in prayer and fasting. And we are going to obey what the Lord has said unto you. And I'm going to call forth that this ministry will fast for the next 21 days. Let it be known. Let it be established that we will continue fasting for the next 21 days. We will end on September the 23rd because I believe that the Lord has given Prophet Adley instruction to share with us, and we are going to continue. So we will fast for the next 21 days, and we will hear what the Lord has to say. And don't be surprised if we suspend our regular weekly services, with the exception of Sunday, 
and be back on the Zoom call next week mm -hmm. with these great men of God that the Lord has sent because it is time for us. And that starts from me. Prophet Vereen was on the phone with me today and was challenging me as a leader to come up in my prayer life. And I am going to adhere to what these men of God are saying. And I do not consider it to be a shame to my name, but these men of God are greater in that area of intercession and prayer. And this is why we have different gifts in the body of Christ. And there's no need to compete, but you can be blessed. Remember, your ministry is never for yourself, it's for somebody else. I thank God for the intercessors that he's raising up in our church. I heard about the women that were praying this afternoon. I praise God for them, that there are intercessors that God is raising up in the Life Shift Church while praying for their leader, praying for the body of Christ, and praying for the vision to come to manifestation. I don't know about you tonight, but I feel so good in my spirit tonight. Hallelujah, Jesus. The enemies of the church cannot win. The spirit of Jezebel, the spirit of Achan, the spirit, hallelujah, glory to God of Judas, thank you, Lord, and the spirit of Absalom, the predominant spirits that war against the church, they will not prevail. And we will guarantee that they will not prevail as we fast and pray. God will cause mm -hmm. us to triumph over our enemies. Hallelujah, mm -hmm. Jesus. The enemies of God are our enemies. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord Amen. Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Man of God, I hope I didn't take mm -hmm. of your time. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, no, 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 no. No, no, no. Listen, Lord. I'm subject unto you. Thank you, Lord. I'm Lord. subject unto you. I, 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 I respect protocol. I'm subject unto you. But I, I, do, I do know that this is an hour where God is calling the believer back to the altar. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is just, this is the hour I'm telling you, you know, um, I, I was raised on prayer. Um, I've been praying my whole life. I've been going after God my whole life. But it hits differently when what you've been doing so long mm -hmm. all of a sudden feels like you're disconnected from. And it's hard to pursue after something that you're chasing but never gain ground to get close to. And so I understand that in this hour, God is calling the body of Christ back to prayer in an uncomfortable position. We don't talk about doing shut-ins anymore. But those were the times when we saw miracles beyond miracles. Those were the times when we saw demons and devils cast out. Right. That yeah. was the time when we saw the supernatural at an all time high. And so this generation is gifted, right. but, this ge but this generation is not oily. Wow. Yeah. I hear you. This is a gifted generation. Mm -hmm. The Lord spoke to me concerning something. He says there he says there is a toil in the body of Christ because as the prodigal son upon his return, yes. the oldest brother had a nerve to complain about what the father was doing to the one that wasn't in the house when he was already in the house. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. And so what's happening is this pandemic has proved to us as pastors. Yeah that we've gotten eased in Zion. We rejected doing a lot of things so on social media, but all of a sudden we're doing it on social media. Now it has exposed the lack of prayer that we have in our personal lives. It shows a lack of study we have in our personal lives. And so what's happening now God is causing because we point fingers as to say, well, this person got this many people, that person got this many people. Now we are called back to the originality of, of how it should have started. Yeah. If you were a preacher, you should have started preaching to walls before you start preaching to people. Yeah. 
<laughs> and if you shut your church down because you got to preach the walls and can't preach the people, you, my friend, was a counterfeit. <laughs> uh, Lordy. <laughs> so, I, so, I, so I understand where, where we are as a body. I hear you. But whenever God said he's going to do the separation, yeah. No man can go untouched. Yeah. No man can go untouched. Well, you know, so. man of God, the pandemic has actually created the separation. And That's it's, what it's done. And it also created a shift in the fabric of the church. And so there are some things that God decided that he wouldn't allow us to change. So he changed it. And so now when the church convenes, the church will not look the same. And I'm not just talking about aesthetics or in the physical, but I'm talking about in the spiritual, that he's done the rearranging. Because at the end of the day, he has to get, man of God, Matthias to the table, and he's got to get Judas out. And I'm not saying that, this, that the saints are Judas. Here, what I'm saying is Matthias has to come in place so the Matthias is, he's raising up the Matthias is in the midst of the pandemic. And it's not us putting them in place, man of God. It's God putting them in place. How did they get here? They're the Matthias. How did they arrive here? They are the Matthias. Amen. God, systematically. I don't believe, man of God, that he created the pandemic to come, but he's going to get glory as a result of the pandemic being here. And so... There's a change. You know, you, you know, Pastor, I was talking to uh, a man of God, um, and we were talking about the temperature of the church. And uh, I can show you last year, November, the Lord gave me some prophetic forecast and some prophetic words. Yes, concerning what 2020 will behold. Mm. And the first thing the Lord gave me was there was getting ready to be a merging of the apostle and the prophet publicly so that the church can be affirmed and aligned with the will of God. Mm. Not knowing the pandemic was going to come. Yeah, And you've been around long enough to know that if you're not in certain reformations, yeah. then we don't fellowship. Right, true. But if you look at the fabric of the church now, yeah. if you look at the way the church looks now, mm -hmm. who never desired to fellowship mm -hmm. is now doing social media conferences together. <laughs> right, so true, so true. And so, and so what's happening is, God is not going to allow the door to open until what's done on social media could be done in church. I agree. If, if you notice, all major conferences and holy convocations, the major ones yeah. that, has been, that has been running and ruling the country has been disabled. Right. They couldn't do anything because now yeah. God says that if, I have, if I'm coming back for my bride, I'm not coming back for a bride and concubine. Yeah. I'm coming back for only one. Yes, and in order, in order for that one to be established, mm -hmm. first, I must merge the apostle and the prophet together. And honestly, if I be very honest, the church has taken the apostolic the wrong way. We have established it as a doctrine and not a way of living. Yeah, I agree. And because of that, we have literally pushed the prophet out of the way. Because we've pushed the prophet out of the way, the church is moving, afflicted. We're walking with the limp. I hear you. And God says, when he comes, there shall be no spot or wrinkle. And so this is why this pandemic is here. Everything that's been laying dormant has to be regurgitated. And God is not going to allow the door to reopen. Now, there are some churches that have not closed the door. 
And I'll be honest, we haven't closed our doors, but God never told us to. And I believe that you have to do what God has told you. Some people say, well, you're putting people's lives in danger. But I say this, they persecuted the ones who kept the church open. But when it came time to get out there and, and protest in the streets, they were out there with no mask. Right. They right. were in Walmarts. They were in the grocery stores. Right. But yet and still, those who left the church open, we didn't hear God. Now, all of a sudden, they have to regurgitate what they said. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe you did hear God. Maybe it's us. And so God is going to get the schizophrenia in the body of Christ. That's right, sure. That's good. Because we have to stand and believe on what God is telling us to do. Right. Stand on his faith. Even, even when it's not popular. Even when it's not. It you know, popularity is of the enemy. I agree. When the devil recognizes that he can't stop you privately, he's going to blow you up in popularity to try to expose what the blood is covered. <laughs> That's what he does. Popularity is of the enemy. When the enemy recognizes that he cannot destroy you while you're in the desert fighting off the lion and the bear, that he wants to raise you up and put you in front of Goliath, not knowing the preparation that you had with the lion and the bear was all you needed to defeat your Goliath. But the platform had to be created. The platform had to be created. created. And, and guess what? Mm -hmm. and, and, and guess what? Mm -hmm. The platform mm -hmm. wasn't... Mm -hmm solidified by God mm. until blood was placed on it. That's good. So we as leaders, either you're going to protect the name of God or you're going to protect your name. I hear you. So remember even Jesus, even Jesus took a sticking in the side and nails in his hands, nails in his feet. Yeah so that the blood can run down. So that when we stand up and carry that cross, mm -hmm. the enemy can't kill what's already dead. Mm -hmm. So that's why when we die, yes, sir. we multiply. <laughs> we multiply, man. So, you know, I'm just grateful to God, man. And thank you for the, the, the time of fellowship, man, that we get a chance to share. Yes, I've been able to do it too often, man, but um, I, I keep checking, man. And like I said, we're going to be fasting. And as the Lord, as the Lord gives to me, you know, some things I write down, I will send you some things that the Lord is, is saying um, in this hour, um, even with this, with this 21 day fast, Thank you, you man. know, but I, but I will say this pastor, yes. I will say this. Yeah. The measure that God uses or God used to measure your walk with Christ mm -hmm. cannot be compared to what man may hold you to. Yes, sir. The, in other words, what I'm saying is no one can judge your private life based upon a public start. I see, sir. I see. God will always prove in the face of your enemy yes, sir. that he was with you. Remember what David said. God prepared a table Amen. in the presence of your enemies. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. It's not your job to seek revenge. Honestly, it's not even your job to expose your enemies. Right. But it is your job to do what God is telling you to do. And when you go through the white way, God have to spread the table. It's mm, good. So you stay. So you stay encouraged, man. It's your man. God is. God is with you. Thank you, sir. God is with you. Thank you, my brother. God is with you. The difference between us mm. and the body of Christ is that some of us they have certain platforms. God uses our life as an object lesson 
to prove to people that in whatever state that you're in, God is with. We preach David all the time. But my question is this. If you was there to experience what David did with Bathsheba, would you still call him a man of God? Amen. David was the apple of God's eye. Yes, sir. So you stay encouraged, man. I love you, man. Amen. And um, I'll be getting with you all. Thank you, man. Blessings to your brother, please. Absolutely. Him my greetings to him. Absolutely. Man of God. Bless God you. God bless you. God bless you. Thanks. The Lord bless you tonight. Um, we will suspend morning prayer um, tomorrow and Friday. Please um, keep abreast with social media. We'll be sending a message out um, on possibly Friday evening. We'll meet on Zoom. Um, and we will be blessed with the ministry of a man or woman of God. I'm waiting for confirmation on that. But the Lord bless you. The Lord cause his face to smile on you. Remember, fasting and consecration continues on. So let us stay faithful to the process. Shalom.